I'm going to show you how to make this adorable jellyfish looking creature. Um, you might be asking, okay, what is it for? Well, my idea here is to give this to my kitten. I have a new kitten. She's so adorable. And uh, yeah, I'm sure she's going to love playing with that. So this is a very simple um, little amigurumi to make. I created the pattern, I looked at some ideas on Pinterest and figured out more or less how many stitches, how many rounds, how many decreases and increases and here we go, I got this adorable little guy. So I'm going to show you how to do it. For you to be doing this cute jellyfish, you need yarn. Any yarn will do. I'm using something a little thinner. This is leftover baby yarn. Uh, I believe it's a size 3 yarn and the hook is 3.75 millimeters. Also make sure that you have a safety pin. This is very handy for you to count your rounds. If you are landing on this video here because you want to learn how to crochet, well I recommend that you watch my YouTube channel. It's called Crochet and Beyond. I have five lessons on learning how to crochet and I'll be glad to help you out there learning how to crochet step by step. Okay, so take a look there, practice some skills and then come try to do something fun like this cute little jellyfish. Now, for this project here you need to chain four. This is how we get it started. I got one chain there, two, three, four. Join with a slip stitch to the very first chain and then do 12 single crochets inside the ring. I'm assuming here that you are familiar with crochet, so I will skip these stages. I'm just telling you what to do. Like I said, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to learn how to crochet. And that's where you maybe need to take some lessons. My lessons on YouTube are free. So go ahead and take advantage of that. 12 single crochets inside that ring. So we are not joining rounds on this one here. We simply go and go and go. And that's why the safety pin will become very handy very soon. So there we go. We do one another one in the same space that makes two three and repeat four so do that all around two single crochets on each stitch until you get 24 there we go so our circle is becoming bigger and bigger so now you have 24 single crochets all around because we are not joining the rounds you need the safety pin so that you have more or less an idea where your round is starting because it's not very obvious so right here on the last stitch that I just did I do put my safety pin right there I will know that that is the last stitch of my round okay so for the next round what you're gonna do you're gonna do single crochet all around 24 times all around until you get to the safety pin safety pin will be number 24 so here we go this was 23 now for me to do the 24 is right here where the safety pin is so I take it out and then I do stitch number 24 and then I put the safety pin on again this way I always know that this was the end of my round and then from there on it's where the round starts again. The next round needs to be an increasing round again but not on every stitch, every other stitch. Cool? So you will start the pattern this way. You will single crochet on the next stitch and then you will do two single crochets on the next one. One single crochet here two on the next so that increases your round from 24 stitches to 36 stitches so do that all around we are finishing i am at finishing that round i am at 34 again take the safety pin out and i need to do two on the next stitch that would be 35 and 36 and that's when I bring the safety pin back in again. So don't forget the safety pin here. It's an important marking. All right, so our increasing rounds are done. We don't need to increase anymore. What you're gonna do now, you're going to do a couple rounds of 36 single crochets, okay? Until it is long enough. And what you will do is simply six rounds of 36 single crochets okay when you're done with that it will be a little bigger and it will start curving in and that's 
what forms this cute little bubble head here. So right now we need to do the ruffle part right here and for that you need to pay attention to the front loop and the back loop of your stitches. The front loop is only the first little loop right there. Normally when I crochet you go through both loops, right? I want you to only do it on the front loop. On the next stitch what you're gonna do is on the front loop only right there you're going to do one single crochet, one double crochet, one treble crochet, one single crochet. Pardon me, that was a double crochet. Then one single crochet. There we go. All on the front loop. The back loop is hiding here in the back. Later, we will need that back loop again, so don't ignore it either, okay? It's there. In the beginning here, I told you that you weren't going to use anything else other than single crochet. I guess I lied, huh? Didn't I? Um, <laughs> yeah, for this ruffle here, we will need double crochet and treble crochet as well. If you're not quite sure how to do these stitches, check my YouTube channel. I have a quick tutorial on just these two stitches as well, okay? So find out, do them right, and I'm sure you'll be fine. All right, that was all in one loop. On the next loop, you just do a slip stitch, nothing else. Then on the next loop again, you do the ruffle. One single crochet, one double crochet, one treble crochet, all in one loop. Ah. Oops, <laughs> double crochet again. Single crochet and then on the next loop one slip stitch that you do all around here until we get to this point you will have a total of 18 ruffles join right there with a slip stitch really quick that's it and start looking towards the back of the row now you need to grab the back loop that you didn't use earlier and that's where you will go and do one single crochet and then another single crochet here so see those back loops that you did not use now you have to use them and you will at the end of this round have 36 so make sure that here you mark your first one okay and when you get here you will have 36 single crochets all around again start your next row where the safety pin is so take the safety pin out for now and the next three rows are decreasing rows so in this row here you will single crochet in the next four stitches and then decrease I'm going to do a single crochet here that's number one and put my safety pin back so my safety pin is now marking my my beginning of my row not the end anymore it doesn't really matter from now on you know it just gives you an idea where the row is so one two three and four the next two you single crochet together so pull in a loop and then go to the next stitch pull in another loop and on this one here you pull in a loop through all three that decreases one stitch again do four single crochets and keep this idea throughout the entire round so you did four here and then decrease very good do that until you get to the safety pin first decreasing round was done and you should have now 30 single crochets all around now you're going to start the second decreasing round and this time you're going to do three single crochets and then decrease three and then decrease so from those first three first we need to take care of the safety pin okay, and right now so there is one put the safety pin back Oops, it's escaping me. All right, there was one, two, 
three and decrease. Do that throughout the entire round. One, two, three, and decrease until we meet at the safety pin. Now for the third decreasing round, you have to decrease every two stitches. So you will single crochet to decrease single crochet to decrease and this one here that you just did has 24 single crochets and after the next one here you will have 18 single crochets left and now it's time to do the curly cues here we go the curly little guys all right these are super easy to do they look complicated but they are not so I'm gonna show you the first curly cue and then all the others you're gonna do on your own because it's very straightforward you don't really need a safety pin anymore, so get rid of it. First, do a single crochet here on the next stitch, all right? Then chain 20. One, two, three, then 20. Now, on the second chain from the hook, that's the first one, that's the second one, you're going to do three single crochets in that chain. And then you're going to do three single crochets in all the other chains from there. So because you're doing more single crochets than there are chains, the thing is going to curl up. That's how you make a curly cue. So do this, three single crochets inside each chain until you get at the end of the chain, which actually was the beginning of the chain, right? So you're going to do this all around until right there. And then I'm going to tell you what to do next. See, there is your curly cue. See how cute? It curls all up. Isn't that adorable? Yeah. All right. So when you get to the end of the chain, which actually was the beginning of the chain, all you have to do is do a slip stitch right there where it began. I think right there. Slip stitch. And then single crochet on the next stitch and single crochet on the next stitch and then single crochet again and do the next curly cue. Now I like one curly cue a little longer than the other. So this one was 20 chains, this one is gonna be 25. Okay, so 20, 25, 20, 25 all around and you're going to have a total of, let me see, I forgot, seven curly cues. So this one here is going to be 25, so 20, 25, 20, 25, always with two single crochets in between, all right? So at the end, you will have a total of seven curly cues. All right, so let's finish up this jellyfish here. So I'm not at the beach anymore. I didn't have time to finish it there. I was getting late. We had to go home. This was where I left you before doing the curly cues. You ended up making seven. And if you had only one single crochet in between the last two, that's really not a big deal, all right? It doesn't matter. I was asking you to do two single crochets in between, but at between the last two, I ended up having to do only one. Otherwise, this one here was gonna be too close together to that one, really not a big deal. And then what I did, I did another slip stitch at the end there, and it was done. So from here, you're going to cut the string pull through and what you will need you need some fiber fill to stuff this little guy up all right so I have some fiber fill here all right this is easily found at any craft store Walmart has it uh, check out my YouTube channel um, my affiliate links I have them there and this is easily found so go ahead and stuff it in you need about a handful of it, okay? And then I have a tiny little dingle bell. Craft stores, Hobby Lobby has this. Stuck it in there. And make it nice and round. So that was just a little handful, right? Not more than that. And then with this string here, what you're gonna do, you're going to close it up. But for that, you do need a tapestry needle. Kinda close up this opening here it's very simple there's no more crochet involved here yeah so what you will do you will all around these um, curly cues just oops just don't let the curly cues 
get entangled. You will just kind of sew it into the holes here. It doesn't really uh, matter where, kind of right there at the top of the single crochets. Kind of more or less one single crochet in, one single crochet out, and do that all around until you get at the end of the round. And then once you get back to the beginning, just pull it in one more time. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull it really tight and then the hole will close on you and nothing can be seen from there. So from here now, just kind of like find a place to make a knot and then you're done. Sounds good. I pulled it through a couple of times. So on this one here, I'm going to make a knot. And there we go. Pull it up tight. And then I just kind of like go through the bubble here. Try to find the top. Get the needle out. And there we go. Cut it short. There he is. Isn't this just a cute little thing? Now, one thing that I didn't do on the other one is a, um, a string here to kind of like hang it on a door or something. So I'm going to do that on this one. I'm going to make like a twirly string. So I'm going to make one of these really, really long. So all you have to do, get to the top here, attach your um, hook into the hole and pull in the string. There it is. So uh, the length here is up to you. I'm going to do 100 chains. All right. So one, two, three. So I'm going to go up to 100. All right. See you there in just a little bit. All right. So I did 100 chains. If you like it longer or shorter, it's up to you. I will um, do a loop here for it to fit on the doorknob. So for that, I need to skip about 25 chains. So you might give and take there a little bit. Just check out your doorknobs and see what works for you. So I'm gonna go down 25 chains. Two, three, four, five. So I'm going to slip stitch in that stitch right there. There we go, made my loop. Very nice. And then from here, I'm going to do three single crochets on each on each chain so that it twirls up just like the curly cues. All right. So with that in mind, do three single crochets on each stitch. I meet you at the end. All done. See how cute. So there's the initial loop we did from the top and then three single crochets on each chain makes the whole thing twirl up like that. If it doesn't look quite twirly, just kind of like wrap it around your fingers and make the, the waves go the direction, the same direction until it reaches to the top. Then it will start looking even like that, all right? Now here at the end, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to attach this to the other side. This is where I started, so I'm gonna reach over there, pull through, make sure I have a nicer loop here so I have space to pull through. Then here, and then pull through that one, and then you're done. Keep the loop more or less long, cut with the scissors, and then pull through the loop. Oh, come on. Uh huh. And then I am going to tie a knot here okay. and take the needle and weave it into the body of the jellyfish. Okay, do I have to show that? No, okay, let's do it. So here we go. Do that with one um, tip at a time. So what I'm saying is the knot is there, fastening it already, so you can go back into the middle and then find the needle somewhere else on the other side. Let's bring it over there. There we go. See, do the same thing with the other one. Snip it off and Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> Adorable, isn't that? That was really easily made. I think you can do this too.